Now, in the 1980s, we were talking about computers a moment ago with Ben. They changed from something which existed only in science fiction to something that uh, you could own in your own home. Names like the ZX Spectrum, the Commodore, the Amstrad, they were early market leaders as the seeds of what's now a multi-billion pound industry was sown. Mm, for those of you who had one, uh, we've got some on the desk, we'll show you in a minute. Britain's role at the forefront of the digital revolution is the subject of a new docu documentary film. And we're going to speak to the people behind it in a moment. First, let's have a look back at the way computers used to be. I was enjoying the music. <laughs> That's uh, a bit of a throwback. Anthony and Nicola Caulfield, a uh, husband and wife team behind that documentary from Bedrooms to Billions, are with us now. Welcome. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Um, Hello. I think we're going to need to explain what all this is, and because we kind of remember a bit. Yeah. I now I had I had a Commodore VIC-20. I never had the 64. That was the really cool one, and yeah. I was always really upset. So that's the Commodore 64. Big old keys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't break this is, well, I don't think of anything. Really well. um, this is the ZX Spectrum. Spectrum what else? Yes. What's that one? Amstrad CPC. Amstrad and BBC Micro. BBC See, Micro. See, the BBC yeah. made computers. Our scores. And do you remember fun. tape decks? I know. Tapes for your games as well. And for people who think Lord Sugar is just a guy who appears on a TV show, Actually, that was one of his early businesses, wasn't it? It was, it was incredibly yeah. successful, actually. Yeah. Um, he saw the opportunity and got right in there, actually, and created a great machine. Why do you think we need a documentary? I mean, I, actually, it's a stupid question in the sense that I'm really excited. You're really <laughs> excited. The whole team's really excited about all these computers. We it's love it, the lane, nostalgia, it? don't yeah. we? But what, what are you telling people? It's such a fantastic British story and that's what we wanted to tell something and just sh show something that we were really good at and that we really pioneered using such amazing machines you mm. know and, and some of these machines people didn't even know certain things weren't possible they literally sat there and just went for it you know and that British inventiveness is amazing and that's what we've got within the film. And is that something that, that has driven forward the games industry because Britain still leads the way doesn't it in, in, in video games, computer games, online games? It's certainly a, it's certainly a major a major leader. I think I think the, the the film itself tracks where that sort of British interest came from in the fact that we and from certainly from our point of view when we started getting interested in making the film was what actually fueled this this industry and why I mean in the name itself from bedrooms to billions is it did start predominantly in bedrooms across the UK in the early 1980s. It's almost similar now as well. I mean yes. we talk we there, there's a different way of looking at gaming as well, isn't there? There's this big popularity online of people who game and what we watch young or well, children watch young people gaming, but also I mean we, we were talking about Manic Miner, um, which was one of the games. Now this was for. Was that for the ZX Spectrum? ZX Spectrum. Spectrum, Spectrum, yes. Spectrum. So lots of people think, man, it minor, I remember that. But that was designed by a really young guy, wasn't it? Yeah. Matthew Smith. Yeah. Smith. 16. 16. Yes, and yeah. it's happening again, isn't yeah. it? That there are lots of young people who are, who, are, who are looking ahead, who are seeing perhaps what our generation yeah. doesn't see these days. So it's still quite inspiring, yeah. isn't it? And, and it's one or two people teams again. Mm. You know, it's not huge budgets. Mm. It's not two, three, four, five hundred people in a team there individuals can do it in their bedrooms again and you know with you know ios and everything so it's absolutely amazing you, you, you it, talked so. about the sort of quintessentially britishness of it I, I remember the zx spectrum was about the third one wasn't it there was a zx 80 i remember that's right and it, there was an advert in the paper and i really wanted one and i never got one but did, did you not have to build that yeah it was um i think it was about 79.99 or 95 and it came in a kit form yeah <laughs> and i think this is that classic sort of british thing I about never made it. all <laughs> these parts arrive in the post and you have to sit there and solder it all together and that became that was still the exciting part of it actually trying to get the thing working at the uh, at the end of it and then be able to then do something with it mm -hmm. and we used to program didn't we we used to like spend ages i spent ages programming <laughs> trying to yeah. do a square or a circle Type in and just get a line yes, and yeah. a right angle and you know ne <laughs> never really get it but that's in fashion again as well isn't it just knowing a little bit more about programming digging in a little deeper and using the mind differently as well it's not changed in that sense no well the other thing is now in schools, they're going to be teaching them programming again, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. You know, and I think kids can really engage with that when they're sat there and they can really work their way through. It's and the computational it's thinking the computational as well. It's computational thinking, yeah. yes. It's, uh, it's, it's gone back on the curriculum again, so it's, we will start seeing that. But I think one of the things was about certainly that inspired us with the, with the, the origin of the film was about how there wasn't really much commercial interest at the very start. It was just simply these computers became available and a lot of British children saw them and just became it positively obsessed with them. Mm. I've got to learn how to program this, I've got to it was type this It a first for knowledge, wasn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. And a lot yeah. of, if there are young, younger people watching now, they'll be amazed that 
actually the games were on cassettes. You know, that had a built-in cassette deck for the... Yeah. That's right, so, and, and I mean, they were incredibly slow cassettes to actually yeah. load and save to. And also, there were huge numbers of technical problems and other things, but still, it was all part of the excitement. You know, like back in the, the 60s and 70s, the amateur radio kits that, that children used to build, it was just an extension from that. Oh, well, it's great. Uh, thank you for the trip down memory lane. It's okay. You're coming back well, 10 to 9, aren't you? I think. We are yeah. back. Anyone yeah. who wants to get a screen grab of all this, <laughs> <laughs> it's just brilliant. And let us know which, um, which computer games you remember and which ones you think back fondly on. And the film from Bedrooms to Billions is going to be released in selected cinemas and, of course, online. Now, in the 1980s, if you remember back that far, computers changed from something that existed only in science fiction to something that we could own in our own homes. Things like the ZX Spectrum, the Commodore 64 and the Amstrad were early market leaders as the seeds of what is now a multi-billion pound industry were sown. And Britain's role at the forefront of that digital revolution is the subject of a new documentary film. We'll speak to the people behind it in a moment, as well as having a really nostalgic look back at some wonderful old computers on the table in front of me. First, here's a look back at how they used to be. Let's talk to Anthony and Nicola Caulfield, the uh, husband and wife team behind the documentary from bedrooms to billions lots of people getting very nostalgic <laughs> this morning i have to tell you and seeing these things on the desk that will bring the nostalgia flooding back as well why did you hit on this as an idea for a documentary well we thought it was an amazing british story and a story that we felt really had to be told about how we pioneered in starting off such an amazing games industry that we have today using computers like this and people really, really pushed the boundaries with what they did. It was quite amazing. But And, and these, um, Anthony, were, were giant corporations, of course, behind big offices and no. shiny facades. <laughs> Not at all. It was, it, it was genuinely um, uh, children working in their bedrooms, often spare bedrooms, because that was a, a, play, a handy place for the computer to go using things like magazines for typing listings and spending 10, 20 hours at a time typing programs in and just learning. And from that, an industry itself spawned. It was uh, quite guess, amazing. And, and not really knowing the limits of the machines. They never looked at it and thought, I can't do this. Yeah. They would always find a way to do it. I, I read an email someone, someone sent in talking about um, the, the, the relative computing power and, you know, something like this one, the BBC B, which I remember we had at school, yeah. is like a, 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 a something millionth of what, a normal computer does now. 100 million almost, it's, yeah, it's, you, you sort of hear these figures, and it, but funny enough, those limitations back then helped drive um, these youngsters on, because it was like, they didn't really know what the limitations were, so mm. there became a sort of an obsession to see if, I wonder if I try this or I do that, you know, I might be able to achieve something. And I mentioned the BBC there, there's uh, the Commodore 64, which, which some people will remember, which is this one here. <laughs> And then this one, Amstrad. So, you know, a younger generation might think Lord Sugar is just a man who pops up on the telly in a reality <laughs> TV show, but this was one of his early businesses. Yeah, he saw the opportunity, knew that it was potentially going to make money, and developed a fantastic machine, actually. That was a very successful machine. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about this. At the end of the Amstrad, there's a cassette deck. Well, it's hard to actually imagine that you could take a game, you know, that, that games back then effectively came on cassette tape. Um, you know, and you could, uh, you had to load it in, and it was incredibly slow. Yeah. But it was a, a, it was a limitation that we just all accepted. You know, twiddling We'd the, the there, heads, you know, yeah, twiddling to, the heads, trying to make it. Because it didn't always load right. And I'm going to hold it up because somebody has emailed in saying that his daughter said to him, "Dad, what's a cassette?" <laughs> um, that that's a cassette. This is the box. And this was Jet Set Willy, which was one of the games of the day, wasn't it? That's yeah. right. It took about five to six minutes to load that, that game in. You were never complete, well, all, most of the cassette games, you were never guaranteed that it would go in first time. But we just, we just accepted it and yeah. just kept playing it. And, and now, I don't know, FIFA 15, which my children seem to play on incessantly, is their instantaneous... It's just amazing how things yeah, have changed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, when you look at football games back then to what they are now, very different. You know, just identical sprites running around back then, and now players, they all look like they do on the pitch and everything. So, yeah, yeah it changed quite a lot. Um, the ZX Spectrum, which is right at the front, was not the first of the Spectrum family. I remember seeing the advert for the ZX80 and really wanting one, didn't never got one. <laughs> um, but that would have required a bit of skill. Yes, you sent off your 79.99 or 79.95 and it came back in a kit form and you had to then effectively um, solder together thousands of joints, <laughs> which again, it was all part of the experience. Yeah. It's, I, I want to have a working computer, I have to build it myself and then, I, and then when you finally got it working, you then had, it turned it on beep beep ready, now what? So effectively, the Imagineering came from that. Yeah, I would never have 
being able to build it for a start. And the magazines, um, tell us a bit about those and, and the way people were able to make their own games. Well, it was, it, it was pre-internet, obviously, when this, when this all really started. So effectively, the magazines were the main source of, of communication, if you want to know what games or whatever. But the magazines themselves, when they started, um, this particular one doesn't have listings in, but they contained computer listings type it, where you would sit there at the computer for hours and hours on end typing in programs. But after that, the magazine started to then review games. Those early games then started to hit the high streets, and a whole retail business you, came you, you from that. You could also sell your games through the magazine, so it would be like mail order. And literally people that would make a game at home do their own duplication. And from there an industry was spawned. It spawned, yes. It's yeah. fascinating. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for coming in to talk to thank us about it. Thank you. We look forward to seeing your documentary. It's called From Bedrooms to Billions. It'll be released in selected cinemas and online, of course. Isn't everything these days? Um, and uh, fascinating emails from many of you this morning reminiscing about your old computers. That's it from the breakfast team for this morning. Bill and Louise are here tomorrow from six. They'll be finding out about how the tower poppies are being cleaned before they are delivered to people who have bought them. They'll also be joined by Peter Davidson, who will tell them about the Doctor Who Symphonic Spectacular. Until then, from all the Sunday team, thank you very much indeed for watching and have a lovely day. Bye bye. <laughs>